Hey, so I wanted to go over testing a circuit for a short to ground. And I do see technicians struggle in this area. Let's, let's say we have a, a code and we're just gonna use the schematic that's up here on the screen as an example. So I've got a uh, six cylinder little Cadillac XT5 here. And we're looking at the uh, throttle position sensor five volt reference circuit right now. So you can see here, throttle body. Throttle body is controlled by the engine control module through high and low side driver circuits that opens and close the throttle plate. And of course we need to get information back to the engine control module about where the throttle plate is at. And this is gonna be your two uh, throttle position sensors, throttle position one, throttle position two. And if you know anything about how those work, they have to correlate with each other. One's gonna read a high voltage and one's gonna read a low voltage. And as we open the throttle blade, those voltages are going to change. The high one's going to go low and the low one's going to go high and they have to be proportional with each other. <clears throat> That's why your signal circuit right here says half because we're splitting the reading between here and here on the two signal circuits or the uh, two, the, sorry, <clears throat> we're, we're splitting the reading on this signal circuit between throttle position one and throttle position two here. So all that to, to say, we'll probably do another video on how throttle position sensors work when you have two sensors like this in one unit, as you see here, where it says logic, these are your throttle position sensors here, throttle position one, throttle position two. So we'll do another video on how this actually functions and what to look for if you have one that you think is not working correctly. But today I really wanna focus on circuit testing and the proper way to test a circuit. Now, circuit system testing across the board as far as the automotive world's concerned usually follows the same rules um, as far as the order in which you test your circuits and the logical order of flow in which you test your circuits and we'll, we're going to do another video on that too uh, so look for that one to be coming out hopefully soon uh, i've got a lot going on at work right now so i'm trying to get these videos out as quickly as i can uh, so hopefully this coming week you know leading into september here we'll have some more videos come out this will probably going to be the only one for this weekend. Uh, so anyway, let's say that we're getting some kind of a code for our five volt reference circuit right here that provides the power for this accelerator pedal position sensor. Well, I mean, the, the manufacturer's information is going to tell me to, you know, unplug the throttle body and test for five volts on that circuit with the key on making sure that the engine control module is capable of providing the five volts on five volt reference number four here to the sensor. So let's say we check that and everything checks out okay. Then it tells me to check for infinite resistance on circuit 2701, the brown and red wire between terminal five at the throttle body and ground. Here's something that is very important to remember when you're checking for a short to ground on a circuit. Whatever diagnostic you're following, if you're following a diagnostic in a book, maybe you know it's in all data or, or Mitchell or pro demand, uh, could even be the manufacturer's information. One part that I've noticed that they leave out, that they, I guess, think that we should automatically know as technicians is when you're checking for a short to ground on a circuit, you have to isolate the circuit, meaning that I need to disconnect the connector to the engine control module, which you can see right there, this connector X3, and then I need to have my connector at my throttle body disconnected as well. If my X3 connector at my engine control module is still plugged in, I'm gonna have some kind of resistance reading the ground that's gonna make me think that I falsely have a short to ground in that circuit, then I'm just going to be chasing my tail, right? I'm going to be running in circles and I may end up coming to the conclusion that, you know, I got to cut this wire harness open and go on a hunt for uh, a chafed wire somewhere where it's shorted out to maybe the engine block or the cylinder head creating that short to ground condition on my circuit. So let's test this on the car and let's, let's take a look at it and, and see uh, where we're at and what kind of reading that we get. We're going to do this first with the engine control module actually connected.
Okay, so if I'm testing for a short to ground on that five volt reference circuit at my throttle body, my expected reading on my DVOM, if I do not have a short to ground on that circuit is gonna be exactly what you see on the meter screen right now, OL, out of limits, extremely high resistance. Okay, I'm not actually plugged into my circuit right now, so I'm gonna connect my meter and the other end of my meter is actually already connected to battery ground over here. So I've got the throttle body unplugged. So let's go ahead and connect our meter to that five volt reference circuit. And we're testing for a short to ground on a circuit. It's going to tell us to make sure we have infinite resistance between that circuit and ground. Right now I have 50.8 K ohms or 50,810 ohms. Get that meter out here. You can see it a little bit better. So 50,810 ohms. That is less than infinite resistance. That would make me think if I didn't know that I needed to isolate that circuit completely, that would make me think that I had a short to ground. Okay. Now this is, remember we're doing this with the engine control module connected. So we're reading some kind of resistance back through the engine control module. That's why it's important to make sure that that circuit is completely isolated and you're only testing the harness, not testing back through a controller somewhere. So you're gonna to need to have access to good schematics so you know what you need to unplug. I'm going to disconnect the engine control module now. We're going to see what changes. So it's engine control module connector X3, which is the top connector on this particular engine control module. So let me disconnect it and let's see what happens. And there we go. So now we're reading out of limits, which is my expected result because I, I knew I did not have a short in this harness anywhere. We're just trying to, you know, to, to get some information out there to kind of give you an understanding of how to properly test these circuits. So when you're testing for a short to ground on a circuit, no matter what circuit it is, no matter what kind of car, truck, whatever you're working on, always remember that you need to be testing the wire only. So anything that that's plugged into, make sure it's completely disconnected and you're only testing the wire harness, just as we did here. ECM's disconnected, the throttle body's disconnected. Now we're only testing the harness itself for short to ground. You can see we actually have no short to ground. Now I do have another vehicle here that has a short to ground on a circuit. Uh, so I'm gonna get my camera set up so you can actually see what that would look like as well. In comparison because right now you're looking at no short to ground and we'll move over to another car and we'll see what a, a short to ground and a wire harness actually looks like so give me just a second and we'll get that set up here so here's a good example of an actual short to ground and a wire harness so let me explain a little bit about what's what was going on with this one most modern cars with automatic transmissions have a little feature where you can do like a tap shift. You can put it in like a manual shift mode and tap up and tap down. Here's my shift controls right here. And you can see on the right side, let me get around here, right here, I can put it, say if I have it in drive, right? I can put it in this mode and I can up shift and down shift. Well, what happens on this one is when as soon as I try to upshift or downshift, it kicks it out of this mode and puts it right back in drive. It says, nope, not gonna happen. And it had some codes set in it. So we're, you know, we were diagnosing this thing, trying to figure out what was going on. So you can see one end of my meter is plugged into the shift controls connector in the center console here, right over here. And it's plugged into the control circuit or the signal circuit that goes from these tap shift buttons right here, all the way down to the body control module, which is right here under the console. And the appropriate connector on the body control module is disconnected. 
this little connector right here. So my harness is completely isolated and I'm going from that signal circuit at the shift controls to a known good ground, which you can actually see right here. I have my ground connected to the dash carrier brace and instead of seeing out of limits on my meter, I'm seeing 2.2, 2 2.4 ohms. It's fluctuating a little bit. There we go. Two and a half ohms, which means I am definitely shorter to ground. So in this case, I would need to go into this harness and figure out where that's at. And I'm probably going to have to do some more teardown on this to actually access that harness because my suspicion would be considering, you know, if anybody has ever pulled a dash out of a vehicle, you know how sharp all this metal and everything that makes up these dash carriers is. Maybe somebody been in here working and that harness is rubbing back in here somewhere and it's actually shorted that signal circuit that goes from my shift controls down to the body control module of the ground. But I, you can see I have the harness completely isolated, unplugged at both ends, and I truly do have a short ground on that circuit. So just a little bit more uh, detail on circuit diagnosis. Hope this helps out.